Well, good day and welcome to the South African lawn. Well, actually, the South African without a lawn at this stage, like I say. So today we're going to talk about how to install an irrigation system rather than installing an irritation system. So very important is to plan, plan, plan. Um, the success of your irrigation system will mostly depend on how well you plan. Firstly, we've got to check the flow rate, we've got to check the pressure. That's the two most important things that we want to check before installing an irrigation system. Okay, so um, now we're going to measure our pressure and our flow rate. Unfortunately, I don't have a DIY kit to measure my pressure, but the pressure was measured previously when I did the uh, irrigation installation. Um, so I haven't got the kit here, but you do get DIY kits to uh, measure your pressure of your water. But today I'll be showing you how to uh, check your flow rate and that's also, I would say, almost the most important thing to check uh, is your flow rate. So what you want to do is you want to get a container that um, can obviously hold a volume or if you've got a container that you know a certain volume of, so if it's a, a 10 or a 15 litre, then you can just measure how long it takes for that bucket or whatever it takes to fill up. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open the tap fully uh, before I insert my bucket. I'm going to let it run in here for 10 seconds. I'm going to pull, pull the bucket out and I'm going to close the tap. Um, and I'm going to see how much liters of water I got into this bucket. So let's have a look. I'm actually going to start my timer earlier. Um, so when it gets to 10 seconds, I'll push it in and then on 20 seconds, I'll pull it out. So exactly 10 seconds. I don't want to waste time opening the tap and so on and making this as efficient and accurate as possible. Okay, so now I'm just going to get my volume meter or, or a can that I can measure the volume with. Um, so I've got my 10 seconds of water uh, in here. Let's see how much it was. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but I've got very close to 6.5 litres per 10 seconds. So now what we want to do is we want to divide 6.5 through 10 and times it by 60, the amount of seconds there is in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to work this out on my cell phone. Um, so we've got 6.5 litres per 10 seconds divided by... 10 equals times 60 seconds for a minute so I've got a flow rate of very close to 40 liters per minute okay so we know what our flow rate is and I've actually measured it um, another day on my irrigation manifold itself and I measured a couple uh, liters per per minute more I, I had about 47 or 48 liters per minute um, I reckon the reducing tap size um, it, uh, it blocked some of the water so the flow rate wasn't as good coming out of a small like I would say about a seven or eight more nozzle from the tap okay so okay that brings us on to our next topic um, and that is sprinklers now you've got to decide on what sprinkler head you want to use for irrigating your lawn or even your garden or whatever the space is that you want to give water um, so I've got two options here. I've got the Rainbird. Um, it's a pop-up sprayer. Um, it's called the Rainbird 5000 Plus. Um, so this is very nice. I have used it in the past. Uh, but actually my favorite is an impact sprinkler. This is very inexpensive. They shoot the water very far. They cover a big dis distance. They don't use as much pressure. Um, so you do get further coverage. It does take a little bit longer to uh, to water your lawn or your area, uh, but it does work fantastic. I'm probably going to use this. Well, I've actually already decided I'm going to go for impact sprinklers. Okay, so on all of my smaller areas, like the one I've got down here at the bottom, that's only 80 square meters. I've used pop-up sprinklers or the Rainbird pop-up sprayers and they work a charm. Uh, they, put, they put the water out very quickly, so it only takes, I would say, about a third of the time to water 
uh, compared to something as big as this. So I love these impact sprinklers. The reason I've gone for this is because they shoot the water so far, so they cover a bigger area much easier. Um, so just a couple of things about this. They rate it to uh, up to 18 meters. I never get that far out of them. I, I, I would say I get about 13 or 14 meters out of this. So it's more than enough. Um, and now you want to start planning where to put your sprinklers uh, in your lawn. So you want to cover all corners, you want to cover the middle, and you want to cover it as even as possible. Plan, plan, plan. Okay, so I've mapped out pretty much all my sprinklers. So I put them where I want them. Um, well, at least for the zone here at the bottom. Those ones I know more or less where I want them as well. There's another one. I'm going to put one here and one there. What you want to try and accomplish is so that the sprinklers spray head to head. What that means is you want that sprinkler to spray all the way to its nearest other sprinkler, which would be this one. So in my case, my sprinklers have got a coverage of about 14 meters. So I don't want to put the sprinklers more than 14 meters apart. Okay, so now we're going to talk about planning where your pipes sh should run. Okay, so mine is mainly going to run against the walls. And please remember that water follows the easiest route. And then most of the time that'll be the shortest route. Um, so my, basically my irrigation manifold is only about four or five meters away from where I'm going to T-split uh, the water here to the three different sprinklers. Um, so you want to try and use T pieces, that's going to be your friend because that's going to ensure that the furthest sprinkler is the shortest distance away from the water source. Okay, so now on to installation. Um, I'm going to add, like I say, a T piece right there. So it feeds that sprinkler right there and also the other two that's going around the corner there. Okay, um, so these fittings that I'm using is 20 mil pipe and 20 mil fittings obviously. Um, they're just a normal pop-on pop -on, uh, fitting, very easy to use. Uh, but make sure your pipes are cut to the right length because it is very difficult to remove this again. So what I've done here is I've rolled out my pipe from my furthest sprinkler all the way to my T-piece connection here where the water will be split. And also while we're on the subject of talking pipes, uh, if you have to deliver masses of water, but please try and use as thick as, uh, as, thick as pipe as possible. Um, so I've gone with a 20 mil here, but I probably could have gone with a 25 mil pipe here as well, or an inch or three quarter inch. Um, just to ensure that your flow rate stays up, doesn't lose pressure because of the thin pipe. Okay, so now connecting my sprinkler pipe, just going to show you how easy it is. Rather measure out a half a meter or so too long, and you can always cut off at the end there. Don't want to go too short here. Be very careful with these knives. I'm using this. Uh, you could probably saw it off, but it's much easier to get it into the fitting um, when it's got a clean cut like this. And then I want to do the same setup to the other side. does require a little bit of elbow grease to get this pipe into this fitting. I like to put my pipes above ground at first, then lay it out to the sprinklers, then connect them up, see if the system works, and then afterwards you can always just trunk them or put them in grounds. Digging trenches is probably the hardest part of installing irrigation.
can see yeah we're all done i've also connected the other one i'm just gonna walk sorry i've dropped my camera <laughs> let's get this back um so i've all done i'm just gonna go to my irrigation controller and see whether it switches on and how it performs i haven't connected this up i'll talk about that let's have a look Ooh, I've got a bit of a leak there. <laughs> Just sort that out first. Okay, it seems to me all my <clears throat> fittings needs a little bit of plumbing tape. I've just sealed up the other one on the other side. Uh, but I just want to show you there's a couple of settings um, on an impact sprinkler like this if I can just keep this thing still um, so it has got a small turnable knob on the side here to distort the water flow so it doesn't flow in a linear flow anymore so it's a more turbulent flow um, we can turn that out in as you can see there, it doesn't disturb the water as much. I'm going to try and get everything not too wet. There we go. Working a charm. Okay, so I just quickly want to talk you through what's happening here. Sprinklers are working nicely, but here I've got an irrigation manifold. I would definitely recommend, if you haven't got one like this, um, getting something similar to this, where you can hook up all of your zones. It just makes it so much easier. Okay, and then you've got the option to either have a standard, I think this is a ball valve, um, but I mean, you, can, you could use any valve. You could actually use them instead of these um, solenoid valves that work on an irrigation timing system okay um, so basically what they do it's just a standard valve like I've showed you I, you can manually turn them on or you can set them up to a timer these have got a couple of wires that I haven't connected yet okay so I'm not going to do a whole review about the irrigation timer um, that's pretty simple to install uh, I might do a video about that in the future but today I was uh, I only wanted to talk about irrigation installation and you can do it manually um, just by adding in a ball or a gate valve um, so it's not necessary to get a system like that um, just the last thing about these sprinklers of mine and uh, now you want I just want to talk quickly about trunking okay so um, I'm gonna run mine all against the walls along the side of the wall which is fairly simple uh, but what you want to do is you don't want to you don't want to keep your pipes too shallow so in the future especially when you're running them through the middle of your lawn well where my lawn is going to be um, because you might want to call aerate you might want to poke a few holes dig or something like that and then you're constantly going to hit some sprinkler pipes and it's very difficult to keep track of where they are so um, I would draw up a map of where you put your put your sprinkler pipes it's much easier when they're along the side it's very easy to remember that okay right along the side there is my irrigation pipes okay well that's it from my side on irrigation thank you so much for watching i really appre appreciate that if you like the content please give it a like and subscribe to my channel there'll be tons of more content to follow um so yes that's it from my side the south african lawn without a lawn